We'll see you, everybody. I'm, uh, coming back from a, a little hiatus. Missed a couple days making videos. Had a lot going on around the house and just trying to recover from a busy weekend. My energy level ain't what it needs to be, but we're getting there. Uh, been cleaning up around the house. We got family coming for Easter uh, weekend. Got the grandkids and some family coming to uh, hang out and have a good time celebrating Easter. But I figured uh, it's been a while since I've done a walkthrough and just showing y'all a good bit of what we got going on. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to try to keep the wind noise down best I can uh, until I can uh, eventually do a little research and find me a good little microphone that'll help with some of that. Hopefully we'll solve that problem here in the near future but uh here we go start off with the little fig tree that's where i was standing actually just let y'all see how she's doing she seems to be doing all right still producing them figs pushing real hard it's the one i actually had to cut down to clean up but she's hopefully this this one right here should just about double in size this year and uh if that does that she'll definitely be my replacement i'm kind of hoping for a couple little shoots to come off down here somewhere and let me get my three trunks back that i had growing out here and in a few years we'll be back to producing like we were she's looking real good and i'm just gonna whip around the corner it's the uh old raised beds that we put in out here next to the chickens and goats that was I was mulching in my previous video and we've got it mulched up heavily now I've got the uh, water hyacinth and then I put a level of used bedding out of the uh, goats area and that's supposed to be a gooseberry I don't know if it's going to make it or not a red gooseberry some thornless blackberries we got in there and I slipped a couple tomatoes in here that were uh, given to me. And you can't really see it but buried down in here. I've got some raspberry roots that hopefully will spring up. And this should really help with holding moisture in here, increase fertility, and uh, make it so that I can grow stuff in here. My goal is to eventually have this all berries. I would like thornless blackberries on this end and then different varieties of raspberries down through there and then strawberries scattered throughout. So that'll be the uh, berry area. Some of the little goats are babies. We're gonna keep her and sell her. It'll be Zena's first that we're keeping. Everybody hanging out in the house. Just a lazy day. It's supposed to rain today, but don't know. I got Abby and Ollie and Broggy hanging out with me today. What are you doing, big boy? Huh, Xander? How are you doing, buddy? One of our pretty geese. Dottie and Minnie, her daughter. Just chilling and relaxing. There's Zoe. She was the one that was really sick during her pregnancy. She's bouncing back well. She helps take care of pretty much all the babies. Never really produced milk well due to her health being down, but she's improving greatly. I'm gonna start getting my goats out here to start clearing the tree line again, keeping the banks of the pond clean over the summer. Natasha and her adopted family now, Sydney and Sandy, looking a little rough because they're shedding their winter fur. How you doing, huh? Natasha's been weaned now, so she's pellets and grass only, but she still wants that bottle. They're looking good. I hear you come over here so they're gonna probably follow us and make a little racket while we go I'm gonna try to get some moringas up here this year see if I can get a few of them growing I spoke with uh David the good at this last conference and he told me that they 
in young form they drowned easy and we have such a low water table that that might be my mistake so i've been planting them down at the low end of the property so we'll see got my yapon holly looking good one of three and the squirrels planting me in uh pecan tree right there so i'm gonna let it grow up and that'll be the corner for this one once it gets about this tall i may graft it with a nicer variety got this area right here got some plantains coming in and i actually had a uh, butterfly bush that made it through the winter it's just starting to put on new growth there and at that last conference i got a uh, mullen plant actually several but i got one put here the rain kind of messed it up hopefully it'll spring forth and do good my arrow growing right there oh man this is my uh sumac trees i'm hoping to get some berries off of them this year it's kind of a little grove again bird planted not mine oddly enough fits perfect in my row though so if you can see i'm trying to do a line that goes all the way down the fence line and this will be my first row of food forest right here and i'll let these stay they're doing well look good and we'll eventually be mulching and degrassing all of this down below with more support species but they're looking great i got this whole area here that i need to plant into and then over here all of this is my elderberry I planted this i think two years ago maybe three and she's already flowering so unless we have some problems here I think we're gonna have an amazing bounty of elderberry this year and they do really good in this spot and tucked in the middle is another yapon holly and she's finally taken off and doing really well i don't know what kind of flower that is i'm gonna have to figure that out but yep uh, yapon's doing good and taking a page from a permapasture farms on youtube i'm slipping in tomato plants next to some of my trees especially some of my support species trees and i'm gonna let them grow up alongside of them and use the trees as the uh, trellis and we'll see how that goes and there's another uh mullen another mullen and a comfrey and i'm hoping that this comfrey will help spawn my comfort population out here and then we got the rest of this row right here that i need to get stuff planted in i had a beautiful tea tree out there but when i had my heart attack some people helping out cutting the grass wiped it out and i was expecting it to come back from the roots but i haven't seen anything yet so still watching for it went ahead and put a blueberry in there a different cultivar than what we have here hopefully it'll spring up it's already got some new growth coming up right there so maybe we'll get us a nice one here and i can plant a tree next to it i've got some seeds of uh some uh cold hardy papaya varieties and i'm gonna try and see if i can slip some of them into that row and this was a little experiment that i had started right before my heart attack last year and of course it's gotten run over now but i'm going to try and clean this up and put some potatoes in here i'm behind on all my garden planting but we should be able to get something planted. I'm gonna try to get some uh, ash and some mulching stuff from the goats and chickens and get it in here, get it uh, raked and tilled in. And then hopefully this will be a decent little crop of potatoes growing here. Walk over here. This is the grape that we got from Virginia, it's supposed to be an early variety. Uh, nobody knows exactly what she is, but 
some of the people I've had to look at it told me that they think she might be a hybrid of an American and an early Italian from the old colonies that it uh, went wild out there. And we're just watching her wake up. This last year she finally took to the trellis and did really well coming in. It's a beautiful grapevine. And if she doesn't produce proper, you know, nothing tasty or something we can eat or use, then we can turn around and graft to her. And she'll be an amazing rootstock. This was another gardening experiment that I started last year and uh, got away from me when I had my heart attack and it's just kind of overgrown. I got to clean it and uh, do something else with it. It may have some, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, graze on contamination over here on this side so we're gonna find out this year and see well, these wild blackberries are taking over the banana circle that I was trying to put in here I got one little banana coming back from the roots after that crazy cold we had these blackberries actually look pretty decent They'll finally look ripe not a lot of them but a few. So we'll try it out. This was a experimental potato patch that the ants tried to take over last year. Everything died over here, so I'm gonna try again. I say everything, but one little potato is coming back from last year. And we never had anything grow there potatoes all shriveled up and died quick so that's a shocker i'm gonna try and support that little guy just to see what it is and maybe we'll keep those genetics for the potatoes we plant out here if it gives us a decent harvest this uh elderberry here was planted here at the same time as those over there but i think this being higher up there's less of a chance of it getting into the uh water table that we have and i think it finally found it because it has never done anything and then this year it's thriving shooting up I had a yellow fig there frost got it and it looks like a squirrel or somebody finished chewing it up but yeah it died I've got a Pakistani mulberry a sassafras and a muscadine vine growing over there from Virginia and again I'm going to try somewhere right in here I'm going to try and get some of my uh uh moringa's growing i've got tons of blueberries down there some more there some here and then we have a beauty berry right here that established itself and this will be the start of all of our beauty berries on the property right here on the border and my first banana circle also somewhat taken over with blackberries not as voracious is the other side i can deal with these probably gonna weed these out but these are dwarf namwas there's one there it's come back that one's come back nothing on this one but i imagine the roots will probably come back but i didn't give them enough sunlight so they're not doing real well here i've been hoping to get some pups and i'll transplant the pups but i may wind up moving the bananas total another little elderberry grove here this one was bird planted, but it's right in line with some uh, mimosas that I'm using for nurse trees. And it reaches from there to there. And so I'm gonna just let it kind of cradle underneath these mimosas, and then I'm going to try to grow something understory with it, a little smaller. And this is my star fruit. This will be her fourth year out here. Her first year being wiped all the way down to the ground. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but she is still alive. She's putting up several little shoots here. Now I imagine this part of her stem is still alive. And from everything I've seen, if I can get her main trunk to hit about four inches in diameter, I won't have to worry about protecting her in the winter unless we just have another insane cold like this last one. Because this, piece of stem here had survived the last three years because I would mulch her.
but this year that cold just wiped her out. So we'll see how much of that survived. I had several citrus hiding in here and nothing. They're all just gone. I'm gonna keep an eye out and see if I see anything come back from the root. But this area is just starting to get overgrown. I need to get back in here and clean it up and then figure out something else. I was hoping being under this oak overstory would help those citrus, but apparently not. Not when you get them crazy frost. Now this is kind of a uh, persimmon grove, I guess. I'd gotten a bunch of native persimmon seedlings. Well, not seedlings, cuttings that it were rooted. I got this one here. And there, there's another one down there. This one here, and actually a big one down there. And another one down there. And there, the ones over here in the shade are just waking up. Well, big girl there, she's been up for a while, but looking really good. And this is right here. It's my University of Kentucky uh, pawpaw seedling. And she's two. Squirrels trimmed her the first year, and she came back from the root. There's a pecan tree right here that keeps trying to come up, and I don't want them that close. I tried digging her out, but the roots were deep, and it's just coming back, so I'm going to have to just keep breaking it off until it dies. But she's doing good. Hopefully, next year, we can get her big enough to flower, because I've got a nice one over there that flowers every year and doesn't do anything because I need two of them. Right here, we've got a pineapple pear that flowered a little bit this year, but I'm hoping next year we'll actually be able to get some fruit off of her. I'm taking advantage of her to do another potato. I try to slip in here with my trees, different herbs, like the lavender that doesn't really like it out here. Another persimmon. I've got lavender down there as well. I was already slipping in some of the stuff, but then seeing Permapasture Farms doing it as well. Um, got seeds for thyme and uh, oregano, and I'm going to be doing some cuttings off of my two rosemary bushes that I have to hopefully get some uh, companion plants for all these trees. It's my beautiful loquat. It was full of flowers this year. It was the first year we got flowers, and then that crazy frost wiped them out. Didn't hurt the tree, though. Just the, the flowers. Tree. Bounced back just fine. This is our uh, Florida peach. I think it's Florida queen or Florida king or something like that. Um, peach. We took a massive drought the other year. And I'm about 600 feet from the house. Can't get water out here just yet. Don't quite have the pressure in the hose for it. But we're working on that. And the drought wiped her out. We lost the main stem. But she shot back up from above the graft so this is still what it's supposed to be and since it has all that root I'm letting it do one fruit just to get the seed out of it and to see how she'll do but I'm hoping that she'll put on some good growth this year this is one of my Israeli apples I always forget the variety but we're letting her do her thing this year she's four years old She's got some apples on her, not a bunch, but just hopefully they'll produce. The frost got a couple little stems, but didn't really do her too bad. Looking good overall. This is a beautiful little tree. I'm going to do my first cleanup pruning this fall. Get her looking all right. Right here is my... Some for uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a Russian variety of uh, pomegranate, and that frost wiped her out to the ground, and then she come back up. And I'm gonna try and maybe air layer a few of these stems that come up to make some more. Right here is our blueberry grove, our biggest one. It actually runs from right there all the way to there some gaps right here but we're gonna start cleaning this out and let the blueberries 
populate into there because I kind of want it to be a semicircle of the blueberries in through here. And they are producing rather well this year. Not like a bumper crop, but still flowering some and dropping the petals, starting to bury out. She took a little hit from that crazy frost as well. All the blueberries did. It looked like somebody hit them with a flamethrower. It was really weird. So I'm not expecting an insane crop off of her, but we'll take what we can get. Like I said, the plant itself looks really good and healthy. And we'll walk around behind her in a second. I've got a couple citrus that are bouncing back. Here's the other pawpaw tree. She had two flowers on her that she dropped this year. Nothing fertilized, of course, but she is putting on some amazing growth, looking good. Had that stem that looked like it had basically died, but it still has some life in it. I don't know in the future I'm going to look up whether or not I can air layer those. I may get those air layered and trim that off. Beautiful Mayhaw bush of mine. I've been hoping for her to flower, but nothing as of yet. She bushes out and looks gorgeous every year. And then towards the end of the year, it gets too hot for her up here. And she tends to drop everything. But it's a good looking bush. Hopefully she'll do something for us. Right, I'm gonna dip in here. I've gotta get in here and get this cleaned up again and uh, put some cardboard down and mulched to stop all this privet stuff from trying to take over again. This is one of my blood oranges. You can see where the cold line kind of stopped on killing her. She's already putting on new growth. So she should bush back out but I mean we lost three feet off of her from the cold there's another one right here same story I got her down a little lower she wasn't as big a bush but still alive several inches out of the ground almost I'd say about eight to ten inches out of the ground putting on new growth and I think this is a grapefruit or a tangerine I can't remember same thing she looks like she's alive up to about a foot from the ground and so she'll she'll push on and look really good got another one over here Ooh, sound like a snake running over there i don't see her though maybe a lizard but it was headed for the fence line so not towards me here this is probably the sick, sickest of the bunch but she's still springing back and there was two more in here i don't think they made it maybe one did oh yeah she thinks still definitely over here somewhere i don't see it though sure hurt her snake or a lizard one thing with this little area right here, I gotta get it mulched down and cleaned up again. I'm slowly building a hoogle mound right here. Some of it's right here, but the forest wants her more than I do at the moment. Oh yeah, here it is. A little tangerine right there. Yep, she survived. She's gonna come back. I'll clear all these oaks from around her right there. This is the backside of the blueberry crest and that was my goal was to have the blueberry crest and then citrus have like a citrus hedge underneath all of these oaks hoping that the oaks will protect them take care of them and then i can eventually get all this privet handled and go ahead and build the hoogle mound up here and get some stuff to grow right in here again under all of this canopy uh, we'll get there. Head back over here. I 
head, a beautiful cluster of lemongrass, and a bunch of wild spring onions out here. The onions have already done their thing, and so they're gone. The lemongrass, that cold snap really hurt her. Not getting a whole lot of regrowth out of her, but that's not lemongrass there. There should be enough in here to where this cluster little nurturing will come back nice and strong. Uh, got a, I think it's a, it starts with a B, some kind of plum, but I'm pretty sure that this is all rootstock coming up right here. Everything I read said we were too hot and humid for it. And it died off. I've actually got Another plum methylly right there that just about the same things happened to, but it keeps giving me one branch above the graft, so she's fighting. And I got some um, pineapple guavas that died back all the way to the ground. And I'm gonna let these come up and then prune all the dead off and see if they give us anything. I've actually got a Chickasaw plum right there and another banana circle but the bananas i haven't seen them come back yet right there and that was heavily mulched yeah the plum may have died this time i think it's a methylene plum i don't see any life in her yeah feels dry so that cold might got might have got her now, this was supposed to be an apricot here and that drought took her down to the ground. So I'm not sure if that's rootstock or apricot coming up. But it was a $3 tree clearance at Ace Hardware. So even if it's just rootstock, I can, I can always graft to it. This is the end of the uh, persimmons, but the last persimmon of all the ones I pointed out earlier. Really growing good. And this is a dwarf mulberry that needs a lot of work. I'm gonna try and harvest some of the stems coming off of this and try to just get two or three growing up on it. But that heat and that cold just really jacked her up. So she's gonna need a lot of work to get going again. This little area right here was supposed to be an area for lamb's quarter. I had some really beautiful plants growing last year. I let them all go to seed. And so far, nothing. I'm hoping that they'll surprise me and start springing up because I love adding lamb's quarter to soups and to my scrambled eggs in the morning. This was a spot to where I had an Anna apple and it got fire blight and died. But... The birds have given me um, elderberry. So I've got a nice elderberry coming up there. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Here's my big girl persimmon. All of these were planted at the same time, same size cuttings. And I don't know, this spot's just really good for her. She's doing amazing. I'm gonna try and air layer a couple of these branches off and I'm probably gonna prune her up to a decent level so I can get in and mow a little easier. Another tomato slipped in there. This right here is a gift from Cody. He uh, brought me a uh, another uh, pawpaw and I was a little worried at first because it was just a little stick, but you can see she's putting on some branches. So we're gonna baby her, get her some mulch around here and get her some support species planted around. Uh, hopefully in a couple of years, that one, the little seedling over there, and that one will start providing us with some fruit. Over here, we got our asparagus bed feathering out. Hopefully for too long, we can harvest off of them, maybe another year. We get a few that are edible looking, but most of them are still skinny and small, so just letting it do its thing. I'm gonna try to expand it out to kind of square it off a little more right here and mulch it all heavy this winter. 
Try to see if I can't weed out some more of that grass since the asparagus pushes through. Right here, we've got a pear. Supposed to be, it was just labeled sweet pear. Um, I'm pretty sure she died below the graft, but not 100%, because it's just kind of weird. If you look here, I don't see a scar yet, so I'm not sure where the graft joint is, but she put this rascal out last year as this one looked like it was dying off. And yeah, that's a tomato planted down beside her. And it is 10 foot tall now. And growing like crazy. So if I don't see any life out of this, which these stems still look alive, but and they feel alive, but they're not waking up. So I may cut some of them for grafting purposes. I'm gonna go ahead, clip that off, and this tree's gonna take over. And if it's a root stock, she'll eventually get grafted as I learn to be better at it. But she's growing voraciously right now, so I'm gonna let some tomato and stuff grow around her right now until I can get some more support species planted around her. What you doing, Abby girl? This was a seedling apple, supposedly about 100 years old variety from around here. And the rabbits got a hold of this tree, chewed it up. So I don't know what's gonna come of it. It's put on new growth, but it's just growing weird. She's not looking right. So we'll see. But right across the way here, I have another seedling from the same apple. And she's just starting to leaf out, looking good. We'll go ahead and get her cleaned up after this growing season, but this one, also a tomato hiding down there. She's six foot tall. And she did almost all of that growing last year. Same age, like I said, from the same apple as that little bitty one down there. And she's just doing amazing. I'm hoping that it'll come back from the roots. I had a Malawi kumquat seedling. It was two years old right there. Again, uh, people helped me out when I was hurt uh, from the heart attack, uh, helping me mow and they eliminated her. <laughs> so we'll see. Right here, another big lemongrass clump. I'm gonna come in here and clean all this dead out sometime in the next week or so. But I used it as a shelter for this uh, white marcel fig. And the fig appreciated it. She's coming back strong, so I'm gonna need to trim some of this back to let her do her growth spurt this year and see how that does. I'll walk down here. I got my mulch compost pile area right there. Fire pile, we burn all of our debris. And at the end of my strip right here, we got one more uh, Yapon Holly. Actually thought she had died on me. And then she sprung back up and we cleaned up around her and she's actually doing good this year. So she's just about a year behind growing wise to the others that are down there. I'm gonna get me some sort of fruit tree or nut tree to plant right here as a shade tree for this area. What are you thinking, Walter boy? How we doing, buddy? Yeah. Looking good, buddy, with your little fat belly. Oh, what you thinking, Walter? Huh? Teddy and Lucky over there. Turkey's over there doing their thing. Ah, here's the hard part. This is the, the main garden. I'm going to try and start right here sometime this week or next week and start reclaiming it getting stuff planted. I'm very far behind on my potatoes. So that's gonna be my first thing is probably onions and potatoes right here. Get the edges squared up and mulched and cleaned up. Get all of this cleared off, fed to the pigs. Get everything planted out there. There's a few garlic, some onions, some peppers that are still alive actually from last year. Peppers are coming back from the root. So that's gonna be interesting to see how they do. So I've got to work around them. I don't want to damage any of that. 
but we're gonna get the garden reclaimed this year even if it takes us all summer to get back to it this was a a uh I'm drawing a blank now, maple tree that was growing in the ditch when I was cleaning up the overflow. And I snatched it out with the backhoe and got most of the roots, but I'm not sure if I killed it or not. The bark still scratches green. I did some damage with the backhoe when I snatched it up, but I didn't ring it. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe she can heal from it, but I'm not sure. So we'll see if she survives. I wanted her to be a beautiful shade tree for this house right here. The pigs and the turkeys and stuff tend to share. This is my herb garden, kind of overgrown, trying to run away with me. I've got uh, Egyptian uh, walking onions here and here. That's the clusters that walked from this batch last year. And then choking everything else out on this side is lemon balm. Got some weed kind of dangling down here. And then we have apple mint right here that should fill this bed up this year. It's actually creeped all the way over here. And then we've got some spearmint trying to sneak its way in here. And then two different varieties of peppermint right here that should eventually take this over. And this will basically just be our mint garden. I'm going to get them onions transplanted out and we'll go from there and have a little more of the garden that needs tended to and taken care of. Walking over here to the piggies. Got all that area right there. I still got cleaning to do, trees to bring down to get back behind there and start my nursery. these dead ones here that I'm gonna have to bring down these storms have been dropped a bunch of them back in here with the pigs where we had cleaned all that up how you doing ladies enjoying your mud pit looking good I've got a mimosa right here as a support tree right here at the edge with a wild mulberry the birds planted next to the house brought it out here last year the end of the season and it is shooting up and going crazy i'm hoping to get it to grow kind of up here and canopy out so it'll drop berries here drop berries here i can harvest some from it but mostly for the animals let them have some and then i had these two native support trees they're kind of a shrub that in perfect conditions would live for about five years, but that cold kills them every year here. But they are a nitrogen fixer and I let them do their thing. So I'm gonna take these out because they're dead. I harvest some seeds from it. And uh, hopefully I can plant some from here on out and use them, you know, throughout the year to establish some trees, get things looking good. I got a little sumac coming up right there. I'm gonna let it do its thing. But, yeah, my uh, old prickly pear cactus. Maybe I'll finally get some fruit off over of this year. We'll see. But uh, I just wanted to give y'all a walk around, let you see where we're at, and uh, give you some ideas on some of our plans. And then we'll go from there. Really appreciate y'all's support. Watto for watching.